All right, Algebra 1, going to finish up the review today uh, with just a few questions, putting a lot of emphasis on the uh, Pythagorean theorem in the final parts of the, of the test. So let's go over, um, let's start at number 13. This is going to be, D and M are going to stand for distance and midpoint. So we're going to find the distance between these two coordinates. <clears throat> and we're also going to find the midpoint between the two coordinates. So I'm going to write... On number 13, we'll do two different examples, 13 and 14. I'm going to write the distance formula here, and that's distance equals square root of x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. And uh, the midpoint is going to be a coordinate, and that's where we add the x's together and divide by 2, and then we add the y's together, and divide by 2. So they will give you these formulas on the exam, so you don't have to memorize them, but it is very important that you know how to use them. And so let's look at the distance formula. We're going to substitute in and see what we come up with. So let's start over here, so I get to some blank space. Okay, x2 minus x1, that's going to be 0 minus 5 squared plus, now we're going to take y2 minus y1, that's going to be 4 minus 1 squared. That's going to give me 0 minus 5 is negative 5, and that squared is going to be 25. 4 minus 1 is 3, and that squared is going to be 9. So that gives me a distance of the square root of 34. Now, if that can be simplified, go ahead and simplify it. But in this case, it's just going to be the square root of 34. Now, midpoint. Midpoint's fairly simple. I just add the x's together. 5 plus 0 is 5. And then I divide that by 2. So that's just 5 over 2. And then I add the y's together. 1 plus 4 is 5. And I'm going to divide that by 2 as well. So the coordinate is 5 halves, 5 halves, with a distance of the square root of 34. Now, I want to do number 14, because it's got some negative numbers in there. And I want to make sure we look at the transition um, of those. So let's go distance is going to equal the square root of 4 minus a negative 5 squared plus negative 2 minus 2 squared. So that's going to give me 4 minus a negative 5. That's 4 plus 5. So that gives me 9 squared, which is 81. And then negative 2 minus 2 gives me negative 4. Negative 4 squared is 16. So that gives me a distance of the square root of 97. Now again, I know I'm going a little fast, but we've already gone through these in class. And so this will be the second time around you have seen them. Okay, let's look at the midpoints. Let's add the x's together. Negative 5 plus 4 is negative 1. So that's going to be negative 1 divided by 2, negative 1 half. And then the second one is going to be 2 plus a negative 2, which is 2 minus 2, which is 0. And 0 divided by 2 is just 0. Do not leave your fraction as 0 over 2. Okay, that is not good. We want to go ahead and change that to just zero. All right, so I will tell you that 13 and 14, if you're looking for more examples, they can be found on page 639. Now, we've got this triangle. Go ahead and pause and take a minute to write it if you're doing this again. Um, you already have it in your review if you'd like to look at it from there. Okay, when we're going to find sine, cosine, and tangent, we need to know the ratios. Sine 
is opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. And tangent is opposite over adjacent. So now we just need to fill in the spaces. So since we're going from angle A, what side is opposite angle A? And that would be 24. And then what side is the hypotenuse? That would be 25. It's the longest side. So my sine is 24 over 25. Cosine adjacent is going to be 7. Hypotenuse is still 25. And then finally on tangent, opposite is 24. And adjacent is 7. So those are the basic trig functions. Sine of A, cosine of A, tangent of A. That's going to be a three-part question. And so um, it will have three checks. If you would like to find some examples of page 15, or excuse me, of number 15, you can find those on page 652. Now, Number 16 and 17, these are, this is a section that we, that I chose not to do, just so I could spend a, a couple of minutes on the review and not have to spend a full day on it. We're looking at similar triangles. And so, um, two things have to happen, or one of two things has to happen. Your triangles either have to have congruent angles, or they have to have proportional sides. Okay, so looking at these two examples, I've got 42 here. I don't know what those two angles are, but I do know that they're congruent. I have these three angles, 51, 57, and 72. So I don't know anything about the sides. So I can't do proportional sides. So what I have to tell myself is these have to have all congruent corresponding angles. Well, this one has a 42. The one over here does not have a 42. So I know that I'm not going to have congruent angles in any way. So these two triangles would not be similar. Looking at another example, let's look at this one. I've got a little leftovers there from another class. Okay. So I know if that's 60 and that's 65, I can find out what angle X is. 60 plus 65 is 125. And so 180 minus 125 is going to be 55. Okay, so I see there's a 55 there. I see there's a 55 there. So we're on the right track so far. Now, these two angles when I have two lines that intersect, they form vertical angles, which means that angle also has to be 65. So now we've got two sets of matching angles, so we know this one has to be 60. And so all of these angles are congruent, so this set of triangles is similar. All right, and some examples of 16 and 17, you can find those on page 644 and 645. Okay, now, number 18, you're going to have to use your sine, cosine, and tangent, and we're going to go through and find this actual angle. We're going to find angle J. Now, when we did this on the homework and on the quiz, we had to find all of the missing pieces. This time they're just asking for one. So let's look at angle J and let's look at the relationship of the sides that they give us. 24 is the hypotenuse and 10 is adjacent. So when I look at Sokotoa, which one uses adjacent and hypotenuse? Obviously, that is cosine. So the cosine 
of j is going to be adjacent over hypotenuse, which is 10 over 24. The next step is I'm going to take 10 and I'm going to divide it by 24 and I'm going to get 0.4167. Okay. Now that's not my angle yet. Now I want to hit cosine negative 1 of 0.4167 and that's going to give me my actual angle. And so that comes out to be 65.37. They're going to ask you to round that to the nearest degree. So we're going to call that, um, now hang on, let me put that in there again. Okay, cosine 0.4167, yeah, 65 degrees. You can find examples like that on page 653. Okay, 19 through 25 are all Pythagorean theorem. So I'm not going to do six Pythagorean theorem questions. What I am going to do uh, is just one that we haven't seen yet. We've already done a couple of them. So looking at 19 through 25, one that might look a little bit different is this one. And they're going to ask you, is this a right triangle? So we're just going to plug this into the Pythagorean theorem. And see if it works out. So that's going to be 81 plus 1600 equals 1681. And so obviously 1681 equals 1681. Now, got to be careful, just like we talked about in class, for those of you who are in class, those of you who are watching this at home that might have been absent today, uh, this will be new to you. Uh, what you're looking for in your answer is, and this is going to be a multiple choice question, you are looking for yes, obviously, because yes, this is a right triangle, and you're going to look for 9 squared plus 40 squared equals 41 squared. Okay, they're going to, it's kind of a two-part answer when you look at those multiple choice. There's going to be a couple ridiculous ones that you can throw out. Obviously, the ones that say no, you're going to know it's not those. You can cross those off and then just look for yes and focus on the equal sign because they may put one in there that says yes, but then it says 9 squared plus 40 squared, and then it'll have a line through the equal sign, which means it does not equal 41 squared, which obviously that is not the case. Okay, So that's the only different Pythagorean theorem. Everything else will be just like the ones we've done before. Now, I want to go back to 18 again, and I'd like to do another one because I feel like uh, we need a little bit more work on this. And so, again, I'm going to focus on uh, angle J. Okay, so I'm going to highlight angle J down here. And I know that from angle J I've got an opposite and an adjacent. Okay, so that's going to be tangent is opposite over adjacent, which is going to be 23 over 14. And so on my calculator I do 23 divided by 14 and I get 1.6429. And so then I want to find the tangent negative 1 button. Ah, 6, 4, 2, 9. So I hit my tangent negative 1 button, and that gives me a degree of... 59. Okay. And so that will cover it. That completes the review for chapter 10. It's very extensive, um, but I know everybody will do well and prepare well. So about 15 minutes worth.